So many people in our lives slip through the cracks. Yeah. And one of the things we're good at is if you set a reminder to follow up with someone, if you don't follow up with them on the day it appears, that reminder stays in today. So if I don't follow up with someone today that's in the reminders for today, when I open up have it, it appears tomorrow. Like it doesn't, it's not like a calendar where everything gets left behind. So you go on vacation for two weeks, you think you have a clean calendar, but you forgot about all the people from the prior month that you should have stayed in touch with. We keep things current and we really work hard to make sure that people don't slip through the cracks. You are listening to Power Marketing with Kevin Lee. Kevin and his agency Did It have helped thousands of businesses win through superior marketing, as have his books, articles, speaking engagements, and the eMarketing Association Power Marketing Podcasts. Here's Kevin. I'm pleased to be with Neil Wainwright today. Uh, he is the CEO and founder of UpHabit, which uh, is a, a new entrant into the wonderful world of CRM. So, Neil, what was the catalyst for uh, UpHabit? What what problem did you feel like you had to solve that none of the existing CRMs or Salesforce automation tools or enablement tools uh, could solve? Well, um, I sold my last business about uh, six years ago now. And as soon as I sold the business and I was out of the business, I had 2,000 corporate accounts that I'd been spent the last 15 years working with and getting to know really well. And all of a sudden, I had none of their contact information. And I thought, wow, okay, I had 15 years of my career, and I have to track everybody down somehow. And it's 2,000 people. We had Shopify and Slack as customers and Fitbit and all these kind of cool companies, including CrossFit. And all of a sudden, I had to start from scratch, kind of building up my relationships with them again. So I thought, okay, I'm going to build something where that's not going to happen again, and I'm going to be able to keep and maintain my relationships. And the other thing I had with my last business, we had a great product. Uh, We had a really good customer success team. So we were growing, we're doubling every year for five years. But if I went and looked in Salesforce, I had one contact per account. So if we dealt with Slack, we talked to like 30 people before they decided to choose us as their supplier. But when I went and looked in Salesforce, uh, the only person I saw in Salesforce was uh, the person who cut the purchase order. So the other 29 people that we wanted to nurture and stay in touch with we're nowhere near Salesforce. So we use Marketo. That was another one of our customers. And Marketo's only as good as the database you have to drive Marketo. So I realized there was a big gap there in terms of getting contacts into Salesforce that we were communicating with. So that's why that's why I built up Habit as a personal initially as a personal CRM. Um, and that's why we built the Salesforce connectivity that we've done now. And we we just issued a press release last month in October of 22 about the integration that we've built with Salesforce. So now we can get contacts in to Salesforce with, with a single tap. Well, I, I can certainly feel some of your pain. I haven't sold any of my businesses yet. I'm over a parallel entrepreneur than a serial one at the moment. But you know, I've got 28 years and thousands of contacts uh, as well. I tend to use LinkedIn as my self-healing Rolodex uh, in that you know, as people move around, it keeps track of them moving around. And sometimes I notice the move, sometimes sometimes I don't. Um, but certainly uh, keeping track of folks is still not particularly easy, particularly trying to keep notes on them, right? So um, I may have met somebody at a conference 12 years ago. And if I have to try to remember where I met them now, I have no idea, right? So h- how does your platform help with that element, right? Because the, the memory is only so good. Uh, and, and I think from a personal CRM perspective, obviously, the relationship I have with the individual is a personal one and a business one. You know, my company only cares about my business, ele- the business element of the relationship. But I care about the fact that, you know, we went to some kind of an event together or, you know, I heard about the fact that he likes whitewater rafting or whatever the case may be. Yeah, that's awesome, Kevin. I, that's exactly what we do. Um, we we have unlimited notes. You can make as many notes about people as you want. They're all date stamped. Uh, we also we kind of describe ourselves sometimes as everything LinkedIn should do but doesn't. So <laughs> in, in LinkedIn, you can't categorize people with tags. 
You can't make unlimited notes about people. You can't even set reminders to follow up with people in a very flexible manner. We do all of those things as well as as much integration as is technically and ethically possible with all the, all the um, social platforms. So in LinkedIn, one of the first things I do is I open our app. And like if I have you in my app, which I do because we've emailed each other and we automatically add people that I've emailed into my app habit, I can then go ahead and click on your name. I can say, add your LinkedIn profile. I can even get your photo from LinkedIn and put it in the app. And then that's in the app permanently. So um, everything you've said makes sense. And, you know, as much as I have like 7,000 people on LinkedIn um, and, you know, but I, I don't stay in touch with all of those people because I have no way to stay in touch with those people in an organized fashion on LinkedIn. Um, and that's why we built up habit is to kind of allow you to set those regular reminders and touch points and also categorize people to make notes about them. So you, you remember you know, how you met someone and how often you've been communicating with them. Absolutely. Um, uh, I have a question that popped into my head uh, as I was sort of thinking through the connectivity between your platform and sort of the standard corporate CRMs, which you would expect a rational, logical organization to have absolutely no issue with essentially there being these parallel data stores, right? The sort of personal one that keeps track of all the personal elements of your relationship and then their CRM, which they are very possessive about with regards to the fact that, you know, where is the person in the sales funnel and what is the size of the mark of the opportunity and those kinds of things. Have you, have you gotten any sort of irrational pushback from folks basically saying like, oh, you know, that, that relationship that Neil has with Kevin Lee, that doesn't belong to the company. That, that, that doesn't belong to Neil. That belongs to us. Right. And, and it's not really a rational thing, but. Companies aren't always rational. <laughs> well, the reality is that um, right now, the companies aren't tracking those relationships at all. Right. Um, like, for example, the 29 people at Slack that we talked to and only one was in Salesforce, the company didn't know about those other 29 people. And quite honestly, if our account executive who, who worked with Slack had left the company, they wouldn't have any clue about those other relationships that have been formed. So it's actually a net benefit to the company. Uh, we've talked to some firms. So uh, one of them's a law firm, and we said, "Okay, well, we're gonna we're gonna give you this tool. Your lawyers and partners are gonna be able to manage their relationships more effectively because that is a relationship selling kind of model for law firms. But you're also gonna be able those those partners are also gonna be able to send all these contacts into Salesforce, so the marketing teams can can actually be most effective with them." And the law firm was like, oh, yeah, that's totally cool. We're, we're happy that the partners have their own relationships and their own contacts. And then they, they share those contacts at their choice. So we're not a, you know, every contact that you have automatically goes to Salesforce because these are individuals and their relationships. They make the choice to put them into Salesforce and th they want to do that. But data entry is not something anybody in sales is paid to do. Right, they're closing deals. They're tracking those opportunities you mentioned. They're 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 trying to get to the end and end result, which is you know a sale and their commission. Um, data entry is not part of what they're paid to do, and we just make it super easy. And what they'll find then when they do that is all of a sudden the marketing teams can support them in their sales process because all of a sudden all these new people start getting drip campaigns and emails. Um, from the marketing team. So the marketing team is able to be more effective and help them close deals, which is a win-win for everybody. Yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on sort of contact classification too, right? Because there are obviously some people who get to know where, where you sort of have a business relationship, but you're also, also friends with them. So there's that dynamic. You also have certain people that you'll run into where it'd be sort of silly for them to be in Salesforce because they're purely one of those connector type people. Like they're not actually the prospect. They're just the right. kind of person that knows everybody and can make introductions, right? And that and the normal CRM construct doesn't really know what to do with that, right? right? But I would imagine that a good salesperson knows exactly what to do with that, but it's more intrinsic that they know, oh yeah, I, this guy's really great. You know, I've never I'll never do business with him directly or her directly, but they're the person I'll go to because they've got these strong tentacles. They're a connector. And, and that's, that's exactly what, what, 
That's exactly right. So what we do with those is you can create your own list of tags, your own way of categorizing contacts. Right. And you might create a tag called connector. And for that tag called connector, you want a default reminder to reach out to them every month just to say hello, you know, see how things are going. Maybe you want to reach out to them about an introduction to some prospect that you might have. Um, and by having that regular reminder to reach out to them, you, you don't you don't reach out to people when you need them. You reach that's not a real relationship. You reach right. out to people on an ongoing basis to make sure you have a strong relationship with them. And things will happen down the road where you, you can reach out to someone who's a good contact and ask, ask for them to introduce you to someone that you know is a target that they're connected to by looking at LinkedIn, probably. Um, but that being able to maintain those relationships, that's not something that Salesforce or HubSpot or Pipedrive, they don't, they're not a relationship app. They're about closing business and tracking opportunities. And we're kind of the relationship management side of that. In some ways, it's pre-funnel. And in some ways, like you said, it, it's, the, um, it's the connectors that are going to introduce you to people and how you maintain those relationships, which is what we're good at. Right, right. Well, you, you've mentioned uh, Salesforce specifically, but I'm wondering if you know, the, the one, one sometimes uses that term somewhat generically as well as like to refer to other CRMs too. And you mentioned a couple of others in your last answer of a pipe drive, for example. So I, I know you're integrated with Salesforce. Are you, are you already integrated into others as well? Or is there just an API or a Zapier Zap that you've put in place for anybody else? Um, no, we're not going to probably do a Zapier app. I'm a big believer in doing some pretty deep integrations. Right. Uh, with prod products, that's what I did with my last company, and it worked out very well. Uh, we've done about um, half the work on HubSpot so far. Um, and actually, uh, by happenstance, I actually was in Estonia about uh, two weeks ago, which is where Pipedrive was founded and where it's based. Mm -hmm. And um, I definitely want to do something with Pipedrive because the, the whole country is amazing. <laughs> and anything I, <laughs> anything I can do to help them would be, would, I'm, 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 I'm excited and happy to do. So we will build more integrations. We just launched the Salesforce one a couple of weeks ago, as I mentioned. But we will actually, when customers approach us and say, hey, I need you to do Pipedrive or I need you to do HubSpot, our answer, and by the way, this is, goes back in my entire career, the answer is always going to be yes. Right. Yeah, so you'll let the customer demand essentially prioritize your integrations, which is, is super smart. Uh, I've had Scott Brinker from HubSpot on as a guest in the past um, and, and others uh, from other platforms. And, and uh, yeah, the, in, in the end, right, the person who's writing the checks to some extent controls part of the product roadmap, but not all of it. <laughs> you need to have a product manager at the same time balancing off the opportunities and customizations as well. Well, in my last company, and certainly with this one, I never, never, ever did a customization per se for a customer. I only did configuration options. Mm -hmm. So uh, what that meant is we just kept adding more and more configuration options. It meant it was still very easy to onboard a client or a customer, but it meant that it was, we by saying yes for 15 years, like I did with my last company, it meant that I had every configuration option. Um, you know, when I won Slack, um, near the end of when I, I owned the business, um, I, I kind of teased them and said, you go ahead and ask the question. I, I'm going to say yes, because I, we've probably already said yes to whatever feature you're going to ask us for. <laughs> and they literally, they literally played stump the vendor for at least an hour. And the answer was yes, because we already had built all the features they had asked for. So it made it a super easy decision for them because right. we, we did everything they possibly wanted. So, and customers come up with the best ideas. Um, like I had a request um, recently where someone wanted hierarchical tags. We have a, you know, one level tagging system and they asked for hierarchical tags. And I said, you know what, that's a really good idea. Um, the gentleman reached out to me yesterday and said, Hey, you know, when are we going to have those? And I went, you know what, now's the time. And we assigned some engineering resources to it literally this morning. And I suspect within a few weeks, it'll be out there and available. Um, but it's because of the customers and what they're asking for, uh, that's what makes our product better every day. And, and we do releases on almost all our platforms, if not daily, at least two or three times a week. Right, right. Well, I, I look forward to continuing to watch it evolve. <laughs> it sounds like you're off to a great start having uh, dealt with uh, 
salesperson challenges for, for many years uh, personally and, and with your teams. Um, so do you have any either personal success stories or, or success stories of other folks who've used the platform and how it's just completely removed the friction or identified an opportunity that was completely unexpected, things like that? Well, we, um, we have a lot of stories like that. We have a lot of salespeople that use our product. Um, obviously, I have one guy, he calls like, I don't know, several hundred. Um, he, he works with auto dealers and he calls several hundred people a month. And the only way he could stay on top of that many relationships is to use our product. And he literally has it set up on an iPad and he has his phone, a headset and a phone set up elsewhere. And he's literally plowing through these, these phone calls and these co uh, contacts to reach out to people because that's how he generates businesses by building relationships. I had another one. We, we surface contacts because you can integrate your local calendar. You can integrate your local contacts and you have contacts that go back 15 or 20 years in your phone. Well, phones came out, you know, 15, you know, smartphones came around 15 years ago. Um, and um, I even have some contacts from, oh, I forget what it was called before even the iPhone and all that stuff. But um, the, it surfaces people you haven't seen in years. And sometimes it's in like an epiphany. We say, oh, that guy I met at a conference and, and um, he seemed pretty interested in what I do. And, and this particular uh, example was an investment advisor. And he, he reached out to the person. He hadn't talked to them in a year and a half, but up had it surfaced that name. He thought, oh, I'm just going to reach out. And, and um, he reached out and he's going to have like a multi-million dollar client as a result <laughs> of reaching out to someone he met at a conference that he forgot about. So many people in our lives slip through the cracks. Yeah. And one of the things we're good at is if you set a reminder to follow up with someone, if you don't follow up with them on the day it appears, that reminder stays in today. So if I don't follow up with someone today that's in the reminders for today, when I open up have it, it appears tomorrow. Like it doesn't, it's not like a calendar where everything gets left behind. So you go on vacation for two weeks, you think you have a clean calendar, but you forgot about all the people from the prior month that you should have stayed in touch with. We keep things current and we really work hard to make sure that people don't slip through the cracks. Yeah, I, I, that alone is a, is a huge functionality because I tend to sort of kick kick the uh, to dos down the road, you know, like a can down the road in my in my tasks, right? And it doesn't happen automatically. There's no auto rollover there. I have to manually go through. Yeah, and the other thing we have, of course, is you might if you go on vacation for two weeks, all of a sudden you have a hundred people to follow up and up at it. When you get back, you're like, this is unrealistic. I'm not going to do it. We have um, an unfortunate acronym uh, feature called bulk snooze or BS. Um, and when you tap it, it'll spread out those reminders over the next month or two months, whatever you want. So you can get back to a manageable level. But if it's a regular rolling reminder where it doesn't matter the day you follow up with people, we have those reminders too. But if it's a rolling reminder, people don't know you took six weeks to follow up on your monthly one instead of one month. They're just, <laughs> yeah. they're just, they're just floored that you followed up with them again when they haven't even gotten back to you from the last, you know, or they haven't, they have, they don't follow up with you at the same pace that you do. They think you're a, an awesome super connector. And it's literally just <laughs> this notification appearing on the app. Yeah. It was funny when I, when I turned on the, uh, the newsletter within LinkedIn with, with, with high aspirations of saying, Oh yeah, I'll be able to crank out a newsletter a week. And because it gave me choice, do I throw a monthly or weekly? I, I was aspirational. I, I picked weekly. And I think I've only ever done two weeks back to back, right? So, but it right. doesn't remind me. And nor are my subscribers emailing me and saying, wait a minute, I thought you were going to email me via the LinkedIn newsletter feature weekly, because that's what it said. Like, they don't know. I mean, it's it's serendipitous to them. So yeah, to your point, you know, people don't realize, uh, people don't realize if you're a little bit late in following up with them in a tickler style reminder, right? You're just, you have them in your tickler and that's what it's yeah. for. And that's what relationships are like, right? You know, if you're chasing an opportunity, you're going to be following, you know, in Salesforce, you're going to be following up every couple of days and, and closing the deal. But if it's a relationship, relationships aren't built on the, the second of every month you talk or anything like that. That's not the way they work. Um, I was thinking about a funny story. Oh, a funny story, a podcast story. So I, I met a guy I was introduced to, and we had this nice conversation on Zoom. 
And then we agreed that, you know, I would go on his podcast. Um, this is a couple of years, uh, but a year and a half ago. And then nothing really came of it. And I let it slip through the cracks too. And then I got this really kind of um, innocuous email from him. And he said, I think his name was, his name was Blair. And I, Blair followed up with me. And he, I got this email saying, hey, Neil, it's been a while since we connected. Let's, let's get together. And I, um, I replied to that email uh, back and forth, say, hey, yeah, the podcast, let's do that thing. And he said, okay, let's do the podcast. So I got on the podcast and I was talking to him about um, that we have this ability to do message templates. They're not bulk sending. They're not, they're not mail merges. Any of that stuff is not, I don't consider that building a relationship. That's right. just kind of email, email automation. And I was talking to him and I was near the end of the podcast and I said, well, wait a second, you used my own product on me, didn't you? Because we have this ability to send this message. So he had a reminder to follow up with me. He clicked to send an email. He picked a template that he had, which is really generic. And then yeah. I responded to it. Um, so he used my own product towards me. And that's how we got <laughs> on the podcast. But it was, it was really cool because he had to take that action personally to do that. And, um, and it can be something as innocuous as, hey, we haven't talked in a little while. Do you want to connect? And people are even appreciative of that because it shows that someone made the effort to reach out and, and stay in touch. One thing I'd be fascinated to hear your opinion on, uh, and it's something I sort of struggle with because you know, I've been in the digital marketing industry for 27, 28 years now, because I was really early. We're talking about CompuServe AOL level uh, entry into digital marketing. So obviously my, you know, my 25,000 closest friends are on LinkedIn. Uh, many of whom I can't even remember where where they where I met them. But the other element of that is, you know, I'm I'm in management now, but I still wear the biz dev cap because you never really take it off when you get to management. Right. And and so, but as a result of that, I sometimes have to have my chief of staff do an outreach for me. I I, I hate doing it, but I sort of realize like I'll give her like a list of folks, and I'll ask her because I want them personalized. Well, ask her to actually do the outreach for me. And of course, LinkedIn makes that difficult, which is silly, right? But there's, there's I, I sort of feel like another missed opportunity is, is this idea of the, the trusted sidekick, right? And, and it, but it needs to be a human. It can't be an AI and it can't be bulk and it can't be automated. It still needs to be human. But when you do have an executive and a trusted assistant who, where the assistant really can almost channel their their executive either because they've been with them for a while or they just understand the personality perfectly or can read the notes right yeah. you know and 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 they therefore impute some things i sort of feel like nobody's cracked that right because it would make me much more efficient right if 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 like the note if there was this sort of ability for there to be a, a, a trusted assistant but done in such a way that it, it doesn't like give them necessarily full access but you know, none of the CRMs that I've seen really do a good job of that. I don't think. I um, we're working towards it. Um, I was me. I met an art gallery yesterday that wanted to use our product in a multi-user mode, and we we don't currently have separate logins and all that stuff. And it, it's a technical thing. And I'm a, trained as a software engineer. I don't write the code, or else it would break. Um, but I think that way. So I, I work with our product teams on on building things. And I realized that we almost have all the features that she needed, only one or two features that we didn't have that would make her life like heaven. And uh, we're going to add those in the next couple of weeks. So she'll be cared for. But we're going to add that ability to have an assistant or a chief of staff be part of your system. Um fairly soon, probably by the end of the year, they can do it now. You can, you can give them your login and they can yeah. log in as you and do all this stuff. Yeah. But I, I'm thinking of giving, um, having it as a sub login where you have some less uh, pervasive permissions that you can grant them to do it. Um, I did it with my last company and it, it, it worked very well. And uh, we're going to do it with UpHabit as well. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I've also had to do some interesting hacks um, because almost every uh, data schema in a CRM thinks about a person ha as having one business identity, right? But I have a cause marketing nonprofit, right? Keep giving forward. And a person has their day job, but they may be on the board of a nonprofit, right? And right. there are some data sources like RELSI and org uh, 
um, org.com, I think it is, or whatever, that are trying to understand this multifaceted, that a person is not just one thing, or a person is multiple things sometimes. Uh, but they don't really, the construct doesn't necessarily easily reflect that, right? So I've had to this sort of shoehorn my construct into that individual so that I know, okay, you know, if, if, if Neil's on the board of Save the Children, Toronto, right, uh, I should be able to know that, or Big Brother, Big Sister, Toronto, or the local Chamber of Commerce, or whatever it is, right? The, the, there's this one-to-many relationship between an organization and an individual, not necessarily always a one-to-one relationship. And the regular CRMs, you try to figure out how to shoehorn that in, they tend the, the smoke flies out of the machine. <laughs> no, we, we, we'd probably do that with tags. Yeah. Um, because our tags, you can have, you can apply uh, 300 tags to a person, like it's unlimited, so 3,000, yeah. 300, whatever. So you can have different tags, you tag people, and you can have unlimited tags. And now that, you know, this one user has asked us for hierarchical tags, you could actually build a hierarchy of tags. So they could be, you know, I know them from X, Y, Z, or their board, you know, like you can, you can get some pretty fancy organization, uh, data configurations um, with our existing tags, but also as we build hierarchical tags in the next month or so, um, you can even take it further with that. But yeah, no, it's right. And one thing I find really interesting is people are always replying to your emails from their personal email, or if you send them a personal email, they reply from their work email. So you end up with, you know, John Smith, and you end up with three email addresses that you've replied to. You don't even notice it, right? Yeah. It just hap- It just happens. But we pick all those up because we integrate with emails and we look at sent folders and we'll see two John Smiths with different email addresses. Now we know, you know, we know enough to not merge those because John Smith is a common name, but we're smart enough to surface it and say, Hey, Kevin, we got two John Smiths. We think they're the same person, but they have different emails. Do you want to merge them? So we give you the choice to do it. And what happens is I get a lot of people's personal emails coming to me um, and getting integrated in their contacts, or if they switch jobs and everything, it'll just naturally pop up in your sent folder. Um, we, your data keeps getting better and better over time. And, and the other systems don't really handle that very well or at all, actually, typically. Yeah. And then if, if someone changes jobs and you have their personal email, you can reach out to them personally and say, Hey, what's your new email or whatever. They'll send you an email from that. You reply. It's in your sent folder. And again, it shows up as a suggested merge and I've had it. Cool, cool. Well, I, I, it sounds like you've already got quite the product roadmap ahead of you. I, I look forward to seeing uh, how you guys continue to evolve as you um, meet the needs of, of the customers who come in through the front door and they'll raise their hands and let you know what they need, apparently. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're, they're really good at that. And Honestly, I'm just, I'm here to delight customers. I, I just want to make them happy. I, I, I never want to say no. Sometimes they'll ask for a capability and we'll say, well, okay, you want it in blue, but if we do it in green, it'll be available in two weeks versus six months. And they'll say, they always say, oh, green's fine. Just, just solve my business issue. Um, and I never want to say no to that. I always want to make sure that I delight the customer and I don't mind spending the engineering resources to make it happen. It's, it's how I've been successful in my career. Um, it, it doesn't come from saying no. I don't want to create any barriers between my customers' happiness and what we offer. Great. Well, thanks, Neil, so much for joining me and talking about uh, the wonderful world of, of sales and sales enablement uh, by using the data and keeping track of relationships. It's my pleasure, Kevin. I really appreciate what you're doing. And if there's any way I can help you in any way, I'm, I'm here to do that. Thanks so much. Kevin Lee's Power Marketing is available on all your favorite podcast networks. Kevin loves helping businesses excel at marketing. Having marketing challenges? Just like Santa in the Miracle on 34th Street. If Kevin can't help you, he'll know someone who can. Find him on LinkedIn, subscribe, or follow.